3rd Armored Cavalry Regiment is the oldest continuously serving cavalry unit in the United States Army. Raised by an act of Congress in 1846 as the Regiment of Mounted Riflemen, the 3rd Armored Cavalry Regiment remains a unique formation in the United States Army. The regiment has a long legacy of, of excellence, uh, courage, and, and combat. Uh, the regiment now is in its 160th year of service uh, to the country, has served with great distinction in all of the nation's major wars uh, on the frontier uh, in, in the West, uh, in Bosnia, and most recently during two tours of duty in Operation Iraqi Freedom. In May of 2005, the regiment moved to Western Nineveh Province, operating as part of the Multinational Brigade Northwest. The 3rd Armored Cavalry Regiment's mission was to defeat an entrenched terrorist network that received external support from Syria and facilitated attacks around Mosul and across Iraq. The 3rd Armored Cavalry Regiment's area of operations extended over 22,000 square kilometers in northwest Iraq and shared a 278 kilometer border with Syria. This area is home to over 675,000 people. Western Nineveh is a culturally diverse region consisting of Arabs, Kurds, Turkmen, and Yazeti. The main population centers were in Talafar, Afghani, Sinjar, Biaj, and Rabia. Talafar was a particular problem because it was a safe haven and support base for enemy activity throughout the region. So we focused our reconnaissance effort there initially, and it was also important just to secure our lines of communication as we arrived in the area of operations. So Sabre, who was our lead unit going into Talafer, had primary responsibility for the city and the outlying areas, and then Tiger Squadron, as, as they came into the area of operation, expanded our reconnaissance effort out to the Syrian border and into towns like Rabia, Ba'ash, and so forth. Talafer is a city of 200,000 people that sits along ancient trade routes between Syria and northern Iraq. In September of 2004, Iraqi security forces collapsed, allowing terrorists to use the town and surrounding areas as an insurgent training area and staging base. We had introduced the Iraqi Army, the, uh, a new Iraqi Army Brigade, 2nd Brigade, 3rd Infantry Division. They arrived uh, to the city at the same time we did and we introduced them to company-sized patrol bases, uh, which absorbed a lot of contact. On the main road going through there, you'd see people out there, but once you got inside the city, you'd see no one. Uh, it was a pretty, pretty bad place. Late May, Tiger Squadron arrived in western Nineveh province and began securing the vast Syrian border region west of Talafar, setting up their main base in the town of Sinjar. Tiger Squadron uh, deployed to the uh, northwest Nineveh province uh, to train Iraqi security forces, which included the Iraqi border defenses, which was arrayed across the northwest, northwest province. We conducted a very thorough zone reconnaissance to gain an understanding of uh, the services in the area, facilities, infrastructures, the leaders, whether it be sheikhs, clerics, uh, local leaders, and also uh, to get an appreciation for the terrain. At the end of May, the regiment launched Operation Veterans Forward to establish a U.S. and Iraqi Army presence along the Syrian border region. From its main operating base in Sinjar, Tiger Squadron worked to clear hold and build towns and villages within the squadron's vast area of operations. The, the sequencing of activities is really key, I think, in restoring order 
and uh, stability within an area that is overrun by insurgents. And isolating it first, inserting security forces, local trained, retrained security forces to uh, add and bolster the confidence of the people in their forces ability to bring security to the town. Tiger then moved north of the Sinjar Mountains and established security at the Syrian border town of Rabia. The Iraqi Border Patrol uh, just kind of conducted sporadic patrols and we would just observe their patrols. Went along, we integrated them into our surveillance and we would have them patrol out in front of us so that we could observe more closely what they were doing and how they were operating. And uh, after that, then we set them off on their own. And then we would also conduct joint surveillance if they had intelligence that someone was going to cross. We would go and support them. We did OPCON, or operationally control, uh, our three uh, air cavalry troops with the uh, OH-58D to each of the uh, ground cavalry squadrons. Uh, with Tiger Squadron out in the west, they had Nomad Troop working directly for them uh, as they conducted area reconnaissance and area surveillance. While stemming the tide of foreign fighters and material from across the Syrian border, the 3rd ACR began conducting aggressive offensive operations to defeat the well-entrenched insurgency in Talafa. The intent of Operation Cold Fusion was to conduct a reconnaissance to develop the situation uh, in that area, in Talafa, in the surrounding areas around Talafa. Uh, it was reconnaissance not only in a physical sense of the terrain, but in the intellectual sense to learn the, the tribal, ethnic, um, and religious uh, issues that were in the city. In the dawn hours of June 7th, Sabre Squadron moved in force into the Sarai neighborhood of Talafu. They caught the enemy off guard and captured a number of high-level targets. Both ground and air elements encountered heavy resistance. We started taking heavy enemy contact from the south, I believe. Um, we then bounded to, to try and return fire. Uh, we were actively engaging the enemy numerous times. Uh, we were then transitioned to, I think, I, I can't remember how many helicopters were, were hit that day, but we transitioned to trying to find the people who were uh, shooting the helicopters and it turned out to be a four-hour gun battle. Combat helicopters received significant ground fire during the operation. During our attack runs, we received high volume small arms fire. Uh, the small arms fire was close enough and in such a quantity that both aircraft had to abort our attack runs uh, to ensure the survival of our aircraft. We then moved off to the eastern section of Talafar outside of the urban limits and began using our systems to identify the enemy and uh, continue our reconnaissance, provide Sabre with uh, situational awareness where they were able to identify the enemy from our handoff and engage and destroy those enemy. Throughout the rest of June, Sabre continued to exploit intelligence sources and attacked into the enemy's safe havens. They continued to receive heavy resistance. My NCO started to report, hey sir, the streets are clearing out, it's getting pretty empty over here. Um, the majority of the uh, Iraqi Army soldiers that were with us uh, in the lead of the patrol were already half down, halfway down the lane to the south uh, when we took fire from the east. Um, I had a soldier in the four-way intersection in the prone facing north who was hit immediately in the first burst of gunfire, AK-47. Um, he was hit in the back of the thigh and uh, he shouted, I'm hit. And pretty much uh, from there, we moved into a, a medevac drill and also returning fire. As the troopers of the 3rd ACR built relationships with the citizens of Talafer, troopers began to receive intelligence on the location of insurgent cells within the city. Smasher 4-1, Smasher Ops. 
Continued observation of insurgent activity allowed artillery fire to have a significant impact on the enemy's ability to gather and prepare attacks. I did not want the enemy to feel that they had a safe haven from, from us. And that they were not safe from any of our weapons. We got permission from our headquarters to launch uh, artillery. After this mission was fired with zero collateral damage and five AIF destroyed, the locals, uh, the local nationals thanked coalition forces for our efforts here in destroying uh, the AIF that were plaguing their area. On July 17, 2005, Tiger Squadron, Sabre Squadron, U.S. Army Special Forces, and the Iraqi Army conducted a large operation to defeat the enemy stronghold in Afghani a small town north of Talafur. So we did a, a battle handover, if you will, between Tiger Forces and uh, Special Forces operating out of Kissick. And <clears throat> they basically uh, conducted a follow-on operation, a um, very short and duration operation, with, uh, exclusively with, with additional Iraqi security forces. We went into Afghani after a uh, fairly large operation by the 3rd ACR in conjunction with them. We uh, established and uh, built a fire base there on the north section of the town. Uh, and from that point on, we conducted operations from there. The 3rd Armored Cavalry Regiment continued to put pressure on the enemy in Tawafur and the western Nineveh province. The enemy, however, continued to hide amongst the population in Tawafur and conducted violent attacks on the population helping coalition forces. The governor of Nineveh removed the mayor of Talafur based on overwhelming evidence of his involvement with terrorist elements. Brigadier General Najim al Jabouri, the city's police chief, stepped forward to become the mayor of Talafur and rebuild the civilian government of the city. The situation was pretty bad. The city was controlled by the terrorists. There was no life on the streets. The people were scared of being killed at any time. We would discuss with him broadly uh, the, the challenges as we saw them. He would give us a better appreciation uh, for the situation as it truly was on the ground and uh, provide us insights uh, from an Iraqi viewpoint on how to address those challenges. I have lived in Iraq for a long time and I have uh, studied uh, the sociology, and uh, I talked to the people and I explained to them about the situation in Talafur and how bad the situation and how those people, they need help. Uh, as security became better, as it became clear that we weren't focused on uh, any one sector tribe, but we were just trying to provide security for the population, uh, working with and through the Iraqi government, our relationship with the sheikhs gradually improved. More importantly, uh, the sheikhs were more cooperative with the Iraqi government and the Iraqi security forces. As the summer passed, it became evident that the entrenched insurgent elements would only be removed by a large-scale offensive operation. Prior to the operation, Al-Qaeda in Iraq attempted to reinforce their efforts in Talafur. An Al-Qaeda website proclaimed that the Lions of Talafur would never surrender their stronghold. The purpose of Operation Restoring Rights was to defeat the insurgency in Talafur such that economic and political development could proceed. And the enemy had used Talafur as a safe haven support base, training base, and it completely terrorized the population. So it wasn't really possible to achieve what we wanted to achieve without first defeating this enemy's ability to intimidate the people. So our 
all of our operations were aimed to first set conditions for the defeat of that enemy in Talafer, and then to concentrate on Talafer specifically to remove these terrorists from the neighborhoods within the city. After the regiment came in, specifically Sabre Squadron, into Talafer and did not break contact um, because we came in with uh, mobile protective firepower and just the attitude of the regiment. So they engaged and made contact and you know, gained and maintained contact within Talafer. The insurgent had to start changing his tactics. One, because of the losses that he suffered, and two, because of the overwhelming firepower of the regiment. An eight-foot berm was constructed around the city of Talafer. This barrier limited vehicle traffic to established roads, severely decreasing the ability of the insurgents to smuggle weapons and fighters into the city. Engineers built a large displaced civilian camp. This area served as a safe haven for Iraqi citizens fleeing the upcoming offensive. The intent behind that was to not allow the insurgents to hide amongst the population because we knew that they would probably try to do that, to flee the city by hiding amongst the populace. We eliminated that opportunity by screening them. Nine Iraqi Army and police battalions joined the 3rd Armored Cavalry Regiment in planning and executing offensive operations. Offensive operations would focus on isolating and defeating the enemy in their strongholds in the Qadassiya and Alwada neighborhoods in the west, and the Sarai and Hassan Khoi neighborhoods in the east. So what we must accomplish is we must defeat the anti-Iraqi forces in Talafar so that they can no longer intimidate the people of Talafar. The scheme of maneuver was for Tiger Squadron to conduct a screen along the wadi that separates Talafar east and west to enable Sabre Squadron to conduct an attack uh, in the eastern part of Talafar while we secured the western flank. Our concept was to Base, uh, it was to isolate it from the north and the south, uh, encircle it, evacuate the, person, the, the, the civilians, screen them as they were being evacuated, and then with, with the uh, great uh, uh, combined operations with the Iraqi army, uh, enter the uh, Sarai district and, and destroy uh, the enemy support zone. The citizens of Talafar were warned of the impending offensive, offering them time to flee the city through the tightly controlled checkpoints. In late August 2005, Operation Restoring Rights began. U.S. and Iraqi forces closed in on the battalions of organized insurgents who were determined to defend their strongholds in Talafar. We detained my troop alone, 80-plus um, detainees, conducted detainee packets, um, numerous weapons caches, food caches, um, and we learned real quickly what their tactics were. Iraqi army soldiers cordoned off neighborhoods and searched for insurgents, often under heavy fire. to stir up a lot of insurgents along the way in Hassan Khoi. There were several IED, improvised explosive device, uh, direct action cells in Hassan Khoi. Uh, so on our way down, uh, we captured uh, roughly 70 individuals, about 30 of them were eventually detained for intelligence purposes. During the Operation Restoring Rights mission, the H-64s were used overhead, high cover, reconnaissance, observation, and then in a close combat attack role. We 
we fired over 54 missiles into the cities. All of them hits, all of them fully functional from high altitudes. Using the high altitude to reduce our noise signature and visual signature also. Um, oftentimes talking to our ground counterparts that we were supporting in these operations, they said they didn't hear us or see us until the missile struck. Isolated in the Sarai district and suffering heavy losses due to attacks based on effective human intelligence, the enemy decided to flee the fighting. The displaced civilian screening point and effective cordon around the Sarai district caught a number of the enemy trying to escape, some who dressed as women. As Operation Restoring Rights was completed, the regiment immediately began to conduct humanitarian aid missions to provide for the citizens of Talafur. As Talafur citizens returned, they were screened to prevent terrorist elements from re-entering the city. Following Operation Restoring Rights, we were occupying houses within the neighborhoods in, within the city. And by doing so, we got to know all the kids and the, the, the wives and the, the heads of household, and so the human intelligence started to increase. The regiment knew that clearing the city of insurgents was only the prelude to a successful counterinsurgency operation in Talafur, as seen by previous operations in Biaj and Afghani. What came after the operation was more important than the, actually the operation uh, or the major uh, combat operation itself. And so we endeavored to rapidly build a police force, and a police force we couldn't recruit initially because the people were too intimidated. But after the operation, we were able to rapidly build a police force of 1,700 policemen, get them off to training, train them not only in police tasks, but also on critical counterinsurgency tasks. It was also important that reconstruction begin immediately. We wanted to reopen the schools. We wanted to allow people to vote and we organized for the elections. So whereas before the operation, only about 5% of the people in Talafa were able to vote. After the operation, over 90% of the people could vote. Whereas before the operation, we couldn't recruit any police. After the operation, we were, we were flooded with police and, and army recruits. Uh, once the enemy's campaign of intimidation was broken, uh, outside contractors were, were willing to come in and help rebuild the city. Uh, outside investors and governmental aid was able to flow into the city for the purposes of reconstruction and the local population was willing to engage in both reconciliation among the tribes and the sects uh, of the city and participate in political processes to include the constitutional referendum and the election. At the end of Operation Restoring Rights, Multinational Forces Iraq sent the 2nd Battalion 325th Airborne Infantry Regiment to Talafur to help secure the victory and to provide increased security for the upcoming elections. Uh, we knew that we were going into Sarai, which was a very tight, compacted area, which was extremely difficult for the mounted force to get into. Uh, as we came into town, we'd seen that there was extensive damage, and uh, we proceeded to clear in zone the eastern portion. Uh, we cleared uh, everything on the eastern side until we hit our phase line, which was the north side of the, the city. And at that point in time, we went into uh, combat outposts where the companies occupied uh, dwellings that were there that were unoccupied, most of them schools, and uh, we established our zone by living there with the uh, local populace. A series of conferences with both the Shia and Sunni sheikhs, leaders of the regiment, and the 3rd Iraqi Army Division helped to clarify coalition intentions and pave the way for improving life in Talafur. What we were working on was trying to assist the Iraqis with building their own infrastructure, um, civil infrastructure, to be able to take care of their own people. Uh, whether it be waterworks or electricity, uh, even just basic trash cleanup. And um, from the beginning of when the 30 CR came in, uh, we ended up doing about $12 million worth of construction. And that was in grant form as well as just outright construction on our part. The regiment working alongside the Iraqi army and Iraqi police, prepared to secure the October 15th constitutional referendum where Iraqis would vote on the future form of their democracy. With the approach of the national constitutional referendum, the regiment began to prepare polling sites throughout western Nineveh. 
Voter turnout in the western Nineveh province during previous elections was low. Only 32,000 voted in January of 2005. Fallujah was the only city in Iraq with a lower turnout. On October 11, 2005, a vehicle-borne IED was detonated in the crowded market area of Talafer. 30 people were killed and 35 were wounded. The following day on October 12th, a suicide bomber detonated himself on a group of Iraqi police recruits lined up outside the city. Despite these attacks, the people of western Nineveh province refused to be intimidated. Over 85% of the population of western Nineveh province turned out to vote. Um, voting was a little, uh, a little slow to begin with and I think a lot of that was because people were a little hesitant. Based